people to get uh, to collect taxes from you, right? So, well, it, so it's really you're you're people. the one who's producing the money, and then the government is collecting a tax. And if you don't do anything, the government can't collect the tax, right? Well, the transaction has to take place, right? So if you um, if you have capital and it brings you passive income, then you have capital gains taxes and other taxes um, on your income. If um, if no one participates in your service and you don't make any money, there's no money generated by your capital, there's no production, then it can't be taxed because it doesn't exist. And if, if nobody produces anything, what happens? If nobody produces anything, then people, the society falls apart. I mean, you know, people die. They die, right? right. Everybody dies. Right. That's the consequence. You have to so, have if, so, yeah, so if you don't produce, and what's the reason to produce if it's not really your money? I still produce and I'm taxed. <laughs> right. <laughs> because right. I care about other people. Right. Oh, oh. And I, and I also. Well, uh, you could do that, yes. I, uh, I, I think it. more fundamentally, I think. Uh, do you think it's morally wrong to initiate physical force against no, someone? Not necessarily. It can be. Who hasn't violated anybody's rights? Can no, I haven't finished the question. Uh, is it morally wrong to initiate physical force against someone who hasn't violated anybody's rights? It can be. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. So, uh, when is it uh, okay to initiate physical force against people who haven't violated anybody's rights? Well, for instance, if people are hurting themselves and you need to restrain them, um, that can be a case where it's uh, all right to initiate force. Um, you can get pretty deep into just war theory um, and, and very complex geopolitical situations where it begins to make sense in the defense of third parties or anticipated harms to initiate. Uh, initiate violence and I, I'm open to all of those things existing. The problem with the non-aggression principle is that um, you actually need aggression to create property, right? So it's kind of an incoherent premise, right? Because if I... Aggression say, is what creates property? Yeah, so if I really? think this is mine, what makes it mine is my right to exclude you from it, right? And so... That's an aggression? Yeah, if so, it, if so you produce something and No, 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 it, no, I didn't produce it. I could just say it's mine. Oh, I didn't say produce this. Table this that table isn't yours. It's mine. I'm saying it's mine. It belongs if, to someone else, you come along I'm saying and it's say mine. that it's yours. And if anyone comes up to it and tries to sit down at it or use it and I beat them up, I'm the one initiating force, right? I mean, I'm the one excluding them from the property that is now mine. That's what makes it my property, in fact. Is this an exclusionary force? Otherwise, it was just a piece of the world, right? I mean, it was here, people could use it. Now I'm saying it's mine and I'm excluding them from just it. Just got here by accident. Who knows, uh, grows on trees. Tables grow on trees. Suppose we go <laughs> out in the world where there's no primitive accumulation and, and I take some plot of land from nature and say it's mine and no one can come on it. People just want to walk across it. I beat them up or attack them saying it's my property. I'm the one initiating force there. So that's what creates property. Oh, the land... Uh, was here uh, even before human beings got here but right, uh, right. the the uh, glasses that you're wearing mm -hmm. those were made by somebody right right and they're not the owner of those glasses right they're according not the owner of the glasses according to our property laws that, that count those contractual exchanges no no the person the manufacturer of these glasses is definitely the owner of those glasses there's no doubt about it in any uh, property law in, in any country that I know of. What do you mean, the, the manufacturer? The, the person who made it. The no, laborer? The person who made it. Whoever, let's make it simple. It's a one guy operation okay. and he's making glasses. Mm -hmm. He's the owner of those glasses when he makes them. Yeah. Right? Not anybody who claims to be the owner. What did he make them out of? The materials that he bought so he had to go through a, a chain, and you can run that chain all so the you, way back to primitive first accumulation. The so his, first he, appropriation from nature is inexplicable except by force. He, the person who sold him the materials sold it to him under certain uh, premises that I'm going to give you a certain amount of money, and you're going to give me the materials. Mm -hmm. So the materials became his when he bought them, right? Right. I mean, legally, that's what happened, right? In the same way that taxed money is legally the government's, those contractual uh, exchanges, the government says legally they transfer ownership. But you deny that. You say that the, uh, the glasses don't belong to anyone. That uh, any, Or you actually you say it belongs to whoever says they own them. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and they uh, use force to stop other people from taking them. I understand that there are two different, there, there are two different levels here on which property functions. There's the legal realist level 
that property is a legal institution that is maintained by the law. And then there's the moral level of who is owed what by the universe, who, who can really justly claim exclusionary rights to what thing. And so that's actually a separate question than what has society designated as the legal regime of property ownership. So that's why some of these answers are getting confused because we're actually toggling back and forth between those two. So the way that you're thinking is a labor mixing process, like Locke says, that when people labor with a piece of the world, they sort of mix a part of themselves with it, and it becomes part of their property almost by nature of the, uh, the emanation of their self-ownership into the thing. Of course, this doesn't make any sense. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. It's not metaphysical. Um, it's kind of a throwaway line, even in Locke. Um, clearly, when you produce things or when you change the world, you're not mixing your labor with them. And then you get the great Nozick